Two weeks ago on 60 Minutes, a leading Soviet dissident, Vladimir Bukovsky, described the Soviet Union as one huge prison camp. Recently, it seems a new Soviet dissident pops up almost every day. And according to these dissidents, led by the Nobel Prize winner Andrei Sakharov, Russia is violating the Helsinki Accords by denying its citizens basic civil rights. In light of all this, it surprised us to hear that somebody sings anti-establishment songs in that very established communist country. His name is Vladimir Vysotsky. Some people call him the Bob Dylan of the Soviet Union. Vysotsky is a famous actor in Russian movies and on the stage. That's his conventional side. But he also writes and sings biting satirical poems about life in the Soviet Union. He says that what he writes and sings is not unpatriotic, so he does not classify himself as a political rebel. But there is no doubt Vysotsky is a strong critic of his society. The Soviet authorities, it seems, don't know what of anything to do about him. They didn't know what to do about him when he got on a plane recently and came to New York. One of his strongest statements is a song called Yene Le Bleu, Things I Don't Like, such as, I don't like cold cynicism. I don't like strangers reading my mail. I hate tattletales and slanderers. I don't like people being shot in the back or in the front. I'm upset when the innocent suffer. All of these things I do not like. These things I will never like. In a way, Vysotsky plays a dangerous game, but he seems confident that he'll get away with it. He's not defiant, but he's also not submissive. Appearing on our program alone was a daring act. You like to describe yourself, I know, uh, and your work uh, as protest, but not revolution. Where is the line between a protest singer or poet and a revolutionary singer and poet? Well, let's put it this way. I've never defined my songs either as songs of protest or songs of revolution. But as to your question, well, probably you could just say the different types of songs are written in different times. In revolutionary times, people write revolutionary songs. And in normal, ordinary times, they write songs of protest, the kinds that are produced everywhere in the world. When people simply want things to be better than they are right now, when they want tomorrow to be better than today. Vysotsky is 38 years old, and he's already done a stretch in a Soviet prison camp. That was in his youth. But now as a movie actor, he has money and privileges few Russians have. All this gives him some traveling opportunities. But he says when he gives an official performance in the Soviet Union, he has to go through a certain degree of curtailment of what he wants to perform. There are people whose job is to regulate what I do, whether I can sing these songs or others. The same is true of my recording. I wrote 600 songs, but I recorded only 20 of them. And how do you know how far you can go and where you have to stop. I write what I think and what I want. But then starts the problem of performing what I have written. Because after all, I'm a performer and I need an audience. And here the difficulties begin, since I don't have very many official performances. So what I do is to perform for my friends. What are the principal themes running through your poetry? What I usually try to do is to deal with the problems of the individual first in his everyday life, the problems which have affected the individual throughout history. I try to write against human vices and failings. And many of my poems are very critical in that sense, without question. We asked about songs about war and detente with the Soviet Union. Vysotsky said he didn't deal with such subjects. But he did have a song about a submarine that was caught under a minefield, running out of air. That was his statement on war. We are submerging. In neutral waters. 
А если накроют, локаторы взвоют, а наши... But if we are discovered, it's all over. Спасите наши души, мы бредим от души. We are running out of air. Save us. Спешите к нам. Hurry. Услышьте нас на суше. Listen to us. Наш сос все глуше, глуше. Our SOS grows fainter and fainter. Души на пополам. Our lungs are bursting, but we can't surface. Там слева по борту, там справа по борту, там прямо по ходу мешает проходу. We are blocked by mines. Death. Death. Спасите наши души, мы бредим от души. Спасите наши души. Пишите к нам, услышьте нас на суше, наш сос все глуше, глуше, и ужас режет души на пополам. Please, please, save us. Души, спасите наши души, спасите наши души. What is the goal, besides entertaining? What is it that you seek to accomplish with your music? I want the public to give some thought to what I am saying. And not just to relax and have a good time. I want the public to feel a certain nervous tension. I want to impose my opinions and my art on the public. The audience has got to experience what I am saying. So, I want to put the public in the same state that I am in. Actually, New York was just a stopover for Vysotsky. He was headed for Montreal to record an album for a Canadian record company. He did that on the sly, without clearing it in advance with Soviet authorities. They had managed to block the release of an earlier album he had cut in France. I would think, perhaps I'm wrong, I would think that those who lead the Soviet Union might be a little wary of letting you out of the country. Uh, are they not? I mean, do they not concern themselves with that? They're not worried about you at all? No, why? I've left the Soviet Union already four or five times and always returned. It's even funny, because I think if I was that kind of person that they were afraid of letting out of the country, we'd be having quite a different interview than we are having now. I'm sitting quietly with you, asking me the questions you want to ask me, and I'm answering them calmly. I love my country, and I don't want to do it any harm, and I will not. We don't want to give the impression that Vysotsky is always writing about things he hates or about doomed submarines. He does a number of patriotic songs that keep him in good graces with the Soviet authorities. And actually, much of the time, he simply pokes fun at small things, like the morning calisthenics they play on Moscow radio. They'll sober you up in the morning, he says, if you're still alive, that is. We have no way of knowing whether the Soviet authorities are getting more lenient toward their critics. But thousands are exiled in prison camps for expressing critical views. Though some seem to get away with it. Vladimir Vysotsky is one of those who walks a very narrow line between official tolerance and oblivion.